everyone. Uh, thank you for joining us today for the England uh, team announcement for Wales versus England. Uh, a couple of just bits of housekeeping. We have a floating mic. A mic will be floating around when we come to end the first and then we'll move it round. Um, we are, the bus is departing at half one today, so we're going to be very tight on our time slots. So thank you in advance for your cooperation. Um, I will hand over to Steve first for a couple of remarks and then we'll uh, come to the floor. Thank you. Firstly, I'd like to say thank you to everyone in the room for coming to this press conference today. I think absolutely everybody who sat here will be eagerly anticipating this game on, uh, on Saturday afternoon. I know myself and all the squad are. The team have been buzzing all week. I'm delighted to welcome Courtney Laws back from injury. He's worked incredibly hard to get himself fit so soon and he has added to the competitiveness and the intensity of training. We travelled to Cardiff this afternoon. We're looking forward to getting there. We're looking forward to seeing all the many wonderful England supporters who are also going to be travelling to Cardiff in the next day or so ahead of this game. Wales versus England in Cardiff is one of the iconic fixtures. We know it's a game that's steeped in history and passion. We know the crowd's going to be in full voice. And I think everybody who loves rugby is looking forward to this game. Thank you. Lovely. Thanks, Steve. And then we'll come to you first. Hi, Steve. Um, firstly, can we just get your reaction to the news last night that this fixture is going to go ahead as planned? Um, we planned that it was always going to go ahead. So nothing's changed from our perspective. I mean, yeah, well, I guess there was a chance that it could not have happened. And I suppose there's a couple of ways of looking at it. Firstly, that maybe Wales haven't had the time they would like to prepare, or, or actually that maybe this could galvanise them and we'll see the players more dangerous than ever. What do you think? Well, I think, firstly, what we're going to say, from myself and everybody involved with the England team, we have um, incredible sympathy for what the Welsh players have gone through. No, no player, no professional athlete should be, uh, have to deal with that level of uncertainty and anxiety. Um, and we really sympathise that with them for that. From our point of view, we've focused on the game and being the best prepared team we possibly can be. Other stuff we can't control, so we just concentrate on what we can 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 do. Just one change to your starting fifteen with Anthony Watson coming in. I mean, how good is it to have him back after almost two years out on this England side? Yeah, I think again, I, I see Anthony's passion to play for England is mirrored across the whole squad, and I think this team's a great blend and I think it's the right blend of players for this particular test match as I say I look at each test match to make sure we get the, the right team um, because every game matters for England. You touched on um, Courtney's return in your in your introduction but how good is it to be able to call on his experience especially when you're travelling to somewhere like the Principality? Well I think you want to have all the, play, the best players possible available. Um, Courtney's worked really hard to come back from injury quickly, potentially you know, sooner than, than many people forecast. But Courtney's um, been so incredibly diligent with it. And again, it adds to the competitive nature of the squad. We want a competitive squad that players, um, that, that, are almost, that we have depth in each position. And I think we're, in certain positions, we're starting to build that. And Courtney certainly adds to that. Thank you very much. Thank you, Russ. Thanks, Anna. Russ, we'll come to you. Hi, Steve. Have you had a chance to see the Wales team yet that was published a few minutes ago? I saw it briefly. We've just come off the training field and come straight here, so I've looked at it as I, as I walked in, but only briefly. Uh, you were, I think, the forwards coach, weren't you, in 2017 when England last won at the Millennium Stadium. It is such a tough place. What's your recollection of what you guys almost needed to do that day and, and get that result as you kind of obviously try to repeat? Well, I think it's... Um, the, the thing you've got to know here, we're an incredible place to play rugby. And again, it, it looks, as you look at the Six Nations tournament and the, the different places, the, the stadium we, we play in and the atmospheres, the history of the games, to be part of it is a privilege. And I know from chatting to many of you in the room here, you feel the same, that going to these places and watching these games and you've, you've watched so many of the, these iconic fixtures, it, it's, it's, it's absolutely terrific. And the players... Players are excited about it. I know that the supporters that, that, that I've met the last week or so have, have, are really excited about it. I know there's going to be there's going to be a lot of England fans travelling down there to, to cheer this team on. Not your problem, I appreciate, but a tough start for Warren yeah. Catlin, as he always said, it might well be coming back and loving a challenge. Um, that'll be fascinating, won't it, to lock horns with with Warren's team in this environment as well. 
Well, from our point of view, I've had the opportunity to work with Warren and the Lions in 2017. Um, and then it's, it was a great opportunity to work with him and, and, and understand a little bit more about how he sees the game. And, and clearly I have a lot of respect for him. The teams right now, to, it, as I've been very clear about what we're trying to do with the England team, is we're trying to rebuild it. Um, and this is only a few weeks into that rebuild. And it's a different situation to what other teams are in. And certainly they've picked a team that's packed full of experience. Uh, they've got a huge number of caps in their team. And that makes this such a, it just adds to the excitement of what a fantastic fixture this is. And just finally for me, consistency of selection. We're starting to see that particularly in the pack, aren't we? And you talk about that England DNA. Is that hopefully a good sign that you're trying to get that, that bedrock for an away test, particularly your first as head coach? Uh, I say I pick a team that I think is the right team mm. for the game we're playing against the opponent we're playing with the players that are available. And that's the process I'll go through for every test match. And I'm not looking too far ahead, not, not looking back. I'm looking at what we need this week. I think the players have trained really hard last week, trying to put some more building blocks in place as we try and you know, strengthen the foundations of this game. We're, try, we're trying to create. Um, we know we've got a lot of work to do. Um, ultimately, we've got a lot of catching up to do with other teams. Uh, but or I can't ask any more of the players in terms of their attitude and desire to want to get better. Thank you. Thanks. If you could pass it behind you, and then we'll finish with Julian. Thank you. Hi, Steve. Um, f f with Kyle Sinclair, I take it his cut has sort of healed enough for him to be to not to have any issues. Was that say? Yes. And uh, brilliant. Okay. Um, and on um, on Anthony. Um, is this almost like a, a new, a fresh start for him? Because obviously he's had so many, he's had a number of different injury problems, hasn't he? Some long and some some short. But you know, it um, seems like a massive chance for someone we, that we know is obviously like a very talented player. Well, I think with Anthony, I was fortunate to be part of the coaching team here a few years ago. And with Anthony, they're playing so well, and then he continued in the England team after I had. Um, left and then had those couple of setbacks and then I signed him I took the opportunity to sign him um, in club rugby and from the day he walked in he's magnificent the way he the professionalism the way he prepared himself the way he helped the younger players how much he cares as a as a professional and, and, I, and I use that word a lot because sometimes I think from outside it, you, you don't see just how much these guys care and he he cares deeply about this team playing for England, and it's great to have him. He adds to the mix in that those outside backs where we're starting to build some competition for place there, some depth and some then the ability to to change tactically for what you need. And you see that you look at what we've got in the back line on on, on the bench there to come on and have the ability to change the game tactically a different uh, to to play a different way. And um, it seems like he's. You know the, the way he carries himself with his confidence and his ability. He's got a bit of an aura about him. Is that the kind of thing that can, you know, give confidence to 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 a team? I think what the the main thing is, and I say this for all all the players, is um, how much. Because I'm asking them to do things a bit differently. I'm asking us to to train a bit differently, prepare a bit differently, how we conduct ourselves a bit differently. And Anthony, along with all the players, has embraced that. We're trying to rebuild a team, and these guys have really grabbed hold of it and are driving it forward. And Anthony's have been, it's brilliant to have him part of it, along with the, the, all these terrific young players. Thank you. And Julian will finish second with you. Yeah. I just wondered, Steve, what's your advice to the, your, your players who haven't played in an atmosphere like Cardiff on a Wales England day before about how they remain composed when, you know, when it's 74,000 people going? going nuts at the, at the principality. Yep, I, I, go back to where I, I echo what I said at the start. What a privilege it is for us all to be involved in a fixture like this. And whatever part we play in it, whether you're a player, a spectator, a, a journalist, a coach, whatever, to be part of a fixture like this, it's, it's terrific. So I think we, as we all do, embrace it, look forward to it. I know the supporters are. And we can't wait to get down to Cardiff. I think there's been a buzz around training all week um, I, I could sense it last week, and, and as you come in at the start of this week, you could you could really feel it. Um, we're looking forward to getting down there and, and getting the game kicked off. Sure, I mean, 
sometimes England, some England teams have been a bit, looked a bit overwhelmed by the whole experience. Is there any way you can sort of stop that or prepare yourself from, to avoid that happening? From our point of view, in the, the stage we're at as a team, it's very straightforward for us. We're trying to put the basics in team. We're trying to be brilliant at basics. That's, that's what we're trying to do. And that's been every day over the last, um, I think it's four weeks now. Is it four weeks? They've been here. Not, it's not. It's not. It's not been an awful long time. So what we're trying to do is is just make sure we 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 build those foundations of our game, and that's what I suppose players to do. And, and I think in in these test matches, get the basics right. Thank you. Thanks very much, guys. Um, we'll